the Labour Party panic as the latest numbers suggest that they will lose in this week's election and left-wing celebrities come out to help Jeremy Corbyn. Right guys, we only have three days to go to the 2019 general election. We've had weeks of having different political parties and leaders convincing people that they're the best party to win a majority. Uh, we had a bit of a bumpy start for most of them, including the Conservatives, but as we got closer to the date, uh, the Tories improved their campaign, the Labour Party stayed the same, and well, the Liberal Democrats completely collapsed, uh, which has been quite difficult for the Conservatives because that meant the, the left-wing vote hasn't been split properly. Uh, most of the Lib Dem vote is now going towards Labour, and you can see in the uh, the opinion polls, the numbers have been suggesting this. Now, the opinion polls have started to change. Uh, there's been an average 10 points uh, difference between the Conservatives and Labour. The Tories have been leading throughout this campaign. And uh, I know that polls change and uh, there is always a, a margin of error, about 3%, we always say. And every time an opinion poll came out that suggested that the Conservatives are leading hugely, Labour activists and Labour supporters said, oh no, it's, it's not accurate, we're going to wait for the Salvation poll. Because Salvation as an opinion, uh, as a polling company, they are they're the most accurate one, they're the ones that actually uh, predicted the uh, the right result, in, even in 2017, uh, when a lot of the uh, polls were suggesting different numbers. So the, uh, the left-wing activists have been waiting for the final Salvation poll to come out, which was last night, uh, to see what the real a picture in the country is. We have the numbers. So back in 2017 it was Salvation that uh, four days before the election they basically predicted the, almost the right result. They had the Conservatives at 41%, Labour 40%, uh, which meant uh, the Conservatives were the largest party but uh, not actually uh, being able to get a majority so it was a bit of a hung parliament situation. Now we have the 2019 results. The Conservative Party on 45%, Labour on 31%. This is a 14-point lead for the Conservatives. The Liberal Democrats have uh, done slightly better than 2017. They're at 11%, but still not great. Uh, the Brexit Party uh, at 4%, similar to UKIP at 3% last time, so not really, not much change. Now, this poll came out... Uh, last night around midnight and everyone uh, was awake and on Sunday night to wait for this especially the Labour members uh, because they were waiting to basically gloat and say look Salvation shows that uh, either Labour are going to win or we're going to have a Hong Kong Parliament now we have some reactions from uh, Labour supporters and it's been fascinating one tweet said I'm depressed I hope Salvation who I still trust the track record of the most along with YouGov have one more poll before the election that shows the lead going back down and this was a weekend exception. We had a tweet from someone who was really upset that this was the final poll. Uh, Mike said, why is this the final poll? There are four days until the election. Four days is an eternity in politics. Come on guys. Paul Ryan tweeted, fake. Ah. And we've got this Remainer who said, anyway, these polls are just designed to scare you, make you give up feel as though you've already lost and make it more likely that you won't vote. I doubt things have shifted that much in the space of a few days, so get out there and vote tactically. And then finally, this tweet that said, I don't find this poll credible at all. Disappointing. Now, the funny thing is, minutes before that this poll came out, all these people were tweeting and saying, oh, we can't wait for the Salvation poll. This is the most accurate and most credible a uh, poll that's going to come out and now they've all completely changed their mind and gone depressed and uh, and uh, before anyone starts commenting on this video and talking about complacency and all that yes we know it's a given uh, don't be complacent because of these numbers uh, opinion polls the purpose half of it is to show the picture of the country uh, the other purpose of the opinion polls is to influence people's mind uh, so we know that already uh, the Labour Party are now so desperate that they've gone out to get celebrities to help them as if that's ever worked, apart from 97 for Tony Blair. It doesn't work in America for the US Democrats. It doesn't work here for the Labour Party either. And uh, yeah, we're going to start doing that. Now, before we start, if, before we talk about these celebrities, uh, if you are new to this channel and if you're enjoying the content, make sure you subscribe and click on the bell next to it. We are getting close to 100,000 subscribers. And actually, watch to the end of this video. We have a very important announcement. It's fun. Now, let's talk about celebrities. Now, let's first 
a focus on Gary Neville. Gary Neville is, I used to like him, well, I still like him as a footballer, but his political opinion, not so much. Jamie mentions about it being a societal problem. It absolutely is, because you're watching the Prime Minister's debate last night where a Prime Minister's talking about basically migration into this country and people coming into this country and having to have a certain level. It, it fuels it all the time. And essentially, it's something that's got worse in the last three years in this country, not just in football. I think Jamie's right on that. Wait, let, let's go back to see exactly what he said, because even the criticism wasn't, it made no sense, because it was, he was just saying what the Prime Minister and most of the country want, which is to control immigration. Yeah, Gary Neville basically just said, you're watching the Prime Minister's debate, where a Prime Minister is talking about migration of, uh, to the country and people having to have certain levels. Well, that's literally what a sensible immigration policy looks like and what the public wants. So it's not like, you know, uh, it said the, the PM has said something ridiculous. It's just basically repeated a sensible policy. Now, talking about having a sensible approach to immigration and just the whole debate in general, Gary Neville, who is now obsessed with uh, virtual signaling on this issue, he said this in the past. Back in 2013, Gary Neville said that he fears for England as foreign players block path for homegrown players. He was worried that the number of foreign players uh, in, the, in England are actually not helping the English football. And more recently, in 2015, Gary Neville also said that he fears for England team because the balance of foreign players has tipped too far. The former Man United defender is now... Uh, part of the England setup, and he's concerned about was concerned about the national team's shrinking talent pool, and he's blamed the foreigners. <laughs> so this is the same Gary Neville who criticised Boris Johnson for having a for wanting to have an Australian point based system. Yeah. Now next is Hugh Grant. Hugh Grant, who has been going around, uh, basically saying that Brexit is a bad idea. Uh, how dare you want to control your borders and your your own laws and your own money? Uh, <laughs> have, free market is a bad idea, free trade is bad. He got destroyed by uh, <laughs> Australian Sky News. And uh, so we have Sky News in this country that is very different to Sky News in Australia. Now, let's watch this clip. I think that the country is on the edge of a true abyss and that if Boris Johnson gets a majority, uh, we will leave the EU with a no deal at the end of next year because he won't have time to make a new free trade deal in, in that year. Hundreds of thousands of job losses, food shortages, medicine shortages, end of peace in Northern Ireland, massive blow to our standing, our influence in the world, etc., etc., etc. And I think that I need to do whatever modest thing I can to try and stop that. Uh, Hugh Grant, the bloke, the bloke who used to hang out in the, uh, in the, in the car parks of various Hollywood um, uh, supermarkets or wherever, um, getting to know the locals better. Um, Hugh Grant tells us catastrophe, James, disaster, all from oh, Brexit. But I'm sorry, the bit that I absolutely loved was that very little posh bit at the end, you know, uh, if there's anything I can do in my own modest little way <laughs> to influence this, you know, because I'm only Hugh Grant here, and, you know, people will just watch a little love actually, and, you know, oh, it's just so yes. nauseating. I want to, yeah, project our vomit seeing that. <laughs> this guy is such an insufferable flog, and in recent years he's been so outspoken about Brexit and his campaign against press freedoms. He's on the wrong side of just about every argument. <laughs> and but he's got the batting eyelids. Hey, no, 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 I tell you. A little yeah. mumble and here we go. They, they are a great asset for the Tories, these uh, celebrities. I think the more <laughs> yes. of them and the more coverage because they get, the better it is for they, the They also just take everybody back to that awful sort of Blairite, Notting Hill yes, set yes. and everything <laughs> that just horrible and, sort of set of people who tried to run everything. Film. Can we just <laughs> Thank you. Agreed. Love Agreed. It had Emma Thompson in it. She was even worse. Extinction Rebellion gluing herself to whatever. Um, we've got another candidate for the hyperbole. Now, I've watched this clip about five times and I still enjoy it. Uh, next we have, uh, in terms of the, the radio and media presenters and figures, James O'Brien, our favourite Remainer, James O'Brien. James has lost his mind now. He's tweeted, it's not hard. Vote Conservative if you think you're being deprived of the life you think you deserve by people who have even less than you do. Don't vote Conservative if you think you're being deprived of the life you deserve by people who already have way, way more than you do. I mean, what is this? Primary school politics. Typical politics of envy. Uh, I mean, not even surprised, it's James O'Brien. 
Um, the Labour MPs and the Labour Party in general are now very concerned. So they're throwing the kitchen sink at this campaign and they're using their best talents. One of them is Richard Bergen, who has been doing some investigation. He's trying to find uh, some uh, detail about the Conservatives and Boris Johnson, and he's found some new information, guys, some new information. The Labour MP Richard Bergen has discovered that Boris Johnson is a Tory, and apparently he wants us to forget this, but that's what he is. And yesterday he also discovered this. He tweeted, with his clown act, Boris Johnson tries to pretend he's different from other Tories. He's not. He's CV. 2001 Tory MP, and then 2008 Tory Mayor, and 2015 again Tory MP, 2016 Tory Minister, 2019 Tory Leader. Oh, he's discovered that Boris Johnson is actually a Tory. I mean, I'm pretty sure that's going to change the result of the election if people finally realise that Boris Johnson is a Tory. So well done Richard Bergen for this discovery. Uh, and uh, finally, let's uh, finish this by talking about leadership. Now, leadership, uh, when it comes to candidates in politics, uh, can be shown in various ways, uh, whether it's by communication, whether it's by having intellectual capacity to have good policies. Another way is to show how he can pour a pint. Jeremy Corbyn was at a pub, and this is what he did when he was trying to pour a pint of beer and didn't really go well. And this is Boris Johnson doing the same thing. And this is what leadership looks like. Do you want this guy in charge? or this guy. Now before we give you the announcement, uh, make sure you check out, uh, if you haven't yet, our merchandise page. Uh, the link is in the description. We have various t-shirt designs for Christmas. If you want to use a, for a Christmas present, we have All I Want for Christmas is Brexit. Uh, but obviously we have different t-shirt designs and coffee mugs and everything, so check out the link in the description. Uh, but in terms of uh, the announcement, as uh, you can tell, we have now reached about 94, 95,000 subscribers. So thank, thanks to everyone for supporting this channel. Um, let's try to get to 100,000. Uh, the moment we get to 100,000 subscribers, uh, we will uh, throw a big party and big event. And we're going to invite uh, some uh, MPs and Brexiteers uh, so, as guests as well. So make sure you share this channel and sh this video with all your friends and everyone you know. Uh, so we get to 100,000 as soon as possible. And if you're not following me on social media yet, then do it. Uh, we've got Twitter and Instagram. You can find the details on the screen. As always, I'm Mario Tisi, and I'll see you guys in the next video.